Welcome back to the dog hood, everyone. I'm glad you could join us again. So now that you've picked your puppy and you've got your puppy home, we're gonna teach you how to appropriately crate train your puppy. This is my friend, Tori. Tori is a golden retriever and she is about 10 weeks old. And so we're gonna use Tori in our examination of how you properly crate train your dog. So we're gonna take a moment to pause and we are going to go ahead and put her up and we're gonna talk a little bit before we bring her back into the situation. So I'll be right back. Welcome back. So let's talk about crate size. One of the most important things that you're going to buy for your dog is a proper crate. So what we wanna do is we wanna to try to buy a crate that is going to be adequate for the adult sized dog. Now my friend Tori is a puppy right now, but she will grow into a fairly large dog. So I wanna make sure that my crate is appropriate for the size that she is going to be as a grown dog. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy our crate and we're also going to be looking for a crate that has a divider. This divider is so important in the process of crate training your puppy. And when we come back in just a second, we're gonna have the crate together and we're going to explain to you the process of this crate. Crates are fundamental in the process of teaching your dog good dog behavior for so many reasons. And we're gonna go over those things here in just a moment. So what we have done is we have assembled our crate and we have placed the divider into the crate at a very short point. And what we wanna do is we wanna have enough room for our puppy to be able to stand up and lay down, but nothing more. So you don't want a lot of motion in this crate or a lot of ability for room in this crate. Puppies do not like to poop and pee where they sleep. So if we can minimize the amount of space that the puppy has in the beginning while the training is going on, then it is a lot more successful for your puppy to not have a potty incident. So the first thing you need to do when you're starting your puppy into the crate process is you need to limit food and water in the evenings. So we wanna make sure that around 7 p.m. at night, no food, no water by mouth. Anything that goes into the mouth is now becoming fuel for the poo-poo and pee-pee machine throughout the course of the evening. Anything that is eaten by mouth is usually going to come out of the puppy within four hours. So at 7 p.m., we wanna go ahead and stop the food. And then as we're going into the later hours of the evening, we wanna play with our puppy. We want our puppy to be tired. So we want to give him as much stimulation before we go to bed as we possibly can. We want to place this crate in a place that will not disturb our sleep. Put it in another room. Uh, put it in a room that maybe has a fan on it or some white noise that will help you sleep. Because you just took a non-diaper two-year-old home that does not speak English. And now we're going to try to teach this puppy to crate drain. There is going to be some crying. We want to be sure that we are not uh, teaching our puppy that every time it cries, we come to it. We want our puppy to feel safe and secure, but we also want our puppy to learn how to self-soothe itself within the crate. This is a behavior that will portray throughout the course of the dog's life that is absolutely invaluable. So in the beginning, not for the rest of the dog's life, but just in the beginning, you wanna place this crate in a place that will not disturb your sleep. Your sleep is really important in this process because you need all the sleep you can get to handle your new puppy. So let's take a pause for just a minute. We're gonna bring Tori back in and we're gonna to explain to you how the rest of this goes. Even if you have various bedtimes, like for instance, you may go to bed at nine o'clock or you might not go to bed until 2 a.m. in the morning, your puppy should always have a bedtime. This teaches the dog how to settle even when you're in the home being active as well. This is a very important task that your puppy needs to be a well-socialized dog in the long run. So we have placed Tori in the crate that is divided off. We went ahead and played very hard with her um, up until bedtime. And right before we placed her in the crate, we went ahead and let her go outside so that she could make her last potty break before the evening is done. So in the process of doing this, we are going to go by the three-day rule. We're going to put the puppy in the crate and we are going to go to bed and we're going to set our alarm for 2 a.m. in the morning. And I always suggest that your bedtime for your puppy be between 10 and 11 o'clock. Uh, the three-day rule is basically that every three days that Tori goes without a potty incident, she gets more of the crate added to her. So she gets a reward for good behavior. We want to always reinforce good behavior with our puppies and let them know they're definitely doing the right thing. So we will place her in the crate and we will go to bed. 2 a.m. our alarm will go off. We will come take Tori out of the crate. We'll take Tori out and potty, have her potty outside. But 
always be careful not to party with your dog at 2 a.m. because if so, then your dog is going to want to party every morning at 2 a.m. So we simply want to take her out, let her go potty, and bring her right back and place her in the crate. In the crate itself, we're not putting any bedding. We're not putting any soft toys. The only thing that can be placed in the crate with your puppy is a toy that can be easily washed off. And I promise you, you're gonna thank me for this. The reason why is because if Tori has a potty incident overnight, all you have to merely do is pull the crate tray out, rinse the tray crate out, wash the puppy, and move on with your life. But if you put bedding and soft toys in here, then what is going to happen is you're going to have to wash those items or throw them away. And we don't wanna do that. And this is merely the training process. Crates are utilized for many different things throughout the course of the dog's life. And we can find within the confines of the crate if the dog is appropriate for bedding and soft toys throughout the course of the day. This is not just for sleeping, this is for training and for also acclimating the dog and finding out whether it is age appropriate for different items in the puppy's life. So, if she goes three days without a potty incident, we take this metal divider and we move it back a little ways and give Tori a little bit more room in the crate. If she makes it three more days, we go ahead and move the crate back a little farther and so on. So a lot of times people ask me, what happens if uh, we get all the way back almost to the end of the crate and the puppy has a potty incident within the crate? I'm glad you asked because I've got the answer for you. So if your puppy actually has a potty incident within the crate confines, what you will do is your puppy will go all the way back to square one. So we're going to, again, confine her to only enough room for her to stand up and lay down nothing more at that point. And then she will continue over the next course of days. She will earn every three days more of the crate being added up to her. Now, something that you personally will get as the owner of this dog is you will get another hour of sleep every time your puppy, puppy does a good job. So every time that she goes three days without a potty incident, you will add one more hour to your time you're getting up. So you were getting up at 2 a.m. in the morning. Now you're getting up at 3 a.m. since she's got her crate moved, uh, divider moved again. If she makes it another three hours, you move it to another three hours. Uh, you, I'm sorry, you move it to another hour. So you have, if you're getting up at 3, now you're getting up at 4 a.m. So we want to make sure that you are getting something and she is getting something through this process. Now, if you get back to the end of the crate and she has that potty incident, she has to move back to square one but you stay at the appropriate time. For instance, if you're at 4 a.m., then you stay at 4 a.m. So she loses, but you do not lose in this process. So when we are doing this process especially, and we're trying to acclimate puppy to the new crate, we want to make sure that the puppy is safe. So I always suggest that you do not wear, you do not have your puppy wear collars. Now she has got her new collar on her right now, uh, and I would not normally place a puppy in a crate with a collar. Too many things can happen to your puppy in the crate when they have things like collars and harnesses on. And sometimes it's easier to get your puppy when you're trying to pull your puppy out of the crate, but the truth of it is that could cause a major health hazard. The puppy could actually hang it on something and cause some major damage to itself. So we wanna remove all those items before we put puppy into the crate. Uh, and so if we end up coming back to the back of the crate, and puppy has that potty incident, the reason why we move the crate divider back up to the front is something called simple link correlation. And simple link correlation training is basically the idea that we are trying to get your puppy or your dog to understand as quickly as possible what we're trying to explain to them. And so dogs do not like to poop or pee where they sleep, we've already established that. So by moving her back into that confined area, it is telling her, no, I don't want you to poop or pee within the confines of the crate. It's a very simple process. It is called simple link correlation. We're teaching our puppy to understand that this is where I need you to be and I need you to be calm and settled. Now, a lot of people want to check on their puppy throughout the course of their, the night because their puppy might actually have a little anxiety while they're away from us. The truth of it is, if you've ever seen a dog that when their owner leaves, they tear up the blinds and they chew up things uh, out of anxiety because uh, Tori had to put her two cents in because they are worried about what they're going to be doing or where you are at, that puppy has to learn how to self-soothe itself. This is one of the biggest gifts that you can get your, give your new puppy, is to be able to teach that puppy how to self-soothe itself throughout the course of the night. So just because puppy is hollering and screaming does not mean that there is anything wrong with the puppy. You've made sure the puppy uh, had everything supply-wise it needed for it went to bed and it went potty. Uh, just because the puppy's crying does not mean that the puppy needs to be attended to. Do check on the dog puppy learns how to self-soothe itself through this process so you don't teach anxiety to the dog. 
every time you give attention to bad behavior, you're only increasing that bad behavior. You don't have to reprimand, but you don't have to give it attention either, and I cannot tell you that enough. So throughout the course of Tori learning her crate process, you are going to be as reserved as you possibly can as far as attending to that dog. You make sure everything is taken care of in the beginning of the evening when you place the puppy in there. Come and get the puppy through the course of the night. Take the puppy outside. Every three days if the puppy has not had an incident, you're gonna move the puppy back uh, crate-wise in with a divider. You are also going to give yourself another hour of sleep. So I hope this helps your process. Once you get the puppy well defined into the crate and acclimated to the crate, you can move this crate into a more common place in the household. The puppy needs good socialization and the only way you're gonna get good socialization with this puppy is by putting it into being part of your family and being part of your household. So as soon as we get the puppy to understand what we're asking him to do, we are going to acclimate that dog back into other places in our house. So I hope you stick around because we have another a web series that is going to be five more videos that I certainly hope that you're going to enjoy. And so I just hope that you will come back next time and enjoy what we have here to offer you at the Dog Hood. Appreciate your time.